The following is a special presentation of the World Baseball Classic. Tonight, the world gathers to watch baseball unite nations. It's a game that speaks to so many, and while the calendar says March, the baseball feels like October. We begin where the trophy resides. Team Japan has won both classics. But Japan must start their title defense against the Cinderella story of the qualifiers, Brazil. Remember, the number one team in the world is still Cuba. It's here to erase the pain of two late classic exits. And the young faces of Team China arrive. They're the team with the most to gain. Tonight, here in Fukuoka, on this global stage, new heroes await. Game one is next. and boisterous crowd awaits us all week. And that week starts tonight. Pool A starts tonight. A very intriguing matchup, Japan and Brazil. Hi, everyone. Rich Waltz along with Buck Martinez, former manager of Team USA back in 2006. One of the great things about the World Baseball Classic, the storylines. And there's no shortage of those here tonight. No, there are plenty of storylines tonight. You have Cinderella Brazil, who nobody expected to be in this tournament, against the two-time reigning champ, the Japanese team. Plus, you also have maybe the best hitting team in the entire tournament, Team Cuba. Now, you saw in that video Hall of Famer Barry Larkin surrounded by Team Brazil. That was after they beat Panama, a team that had Major League stars on it. And they did it with Rafael Fernandez on the mound. He went six shutout innings, and he gets the ball tonight. Well, he sure does, and it's not because of that game in Panama. It's because Fernandez has pitched in the minor leagues here in Japan since 2009. He is not going to be intimidated by this atmosphere or by the lineup he faces tonight. And Barry Larkin believes that he is the best pitcher to get Brazil off on the right foot. Everybody around here in Japan expects Japan to win their third title. There's a lot of pressure. And that pressure was turned up today when the headlines read, will Shinosuke Abe play the terrific catcher for the Japan team? And the answer is no. No, during batting practice, he came out, got loose, and really, in my mind, swung the bat very well. Every camera was focused on Abe during this BP session, but Yamamoto, the manager, said no go. He's on the bench tonight, and that's a big loss. Different Japanese team, they don't have the Yu Darvish or the Ichiro or the Matsuzaka, but they may have the next guy to get to the big leagues, and that's Masahiro Tanaka. He gets the ball tonight. Well, and he's a power pitcher, much along the lines of Yu Darvish. For his career, he's 40 games over 500. He was the rookie of the year in 2007. He won the Japanese equivalent of the Cy Young in 2011, the same year Yu Darvish was 15 and 5. Well, it starts tonight, and the question is, can this Cinderella take a bite out of the favorite? It's Brazil, it's Japan. Hayato Sakamoto, the Japanese shortstop. Leo Reginato, the Brazilian third baseman. They're ready to go. Welcome back to Fukuoka, the Yafuku Dome. Team Brazil is taking the field. Brazil is actually the home team in this opener. And here is Japan's lineup, and it's loaded with stars from the Japanese league. It starts with Hayato Sakamoto, the 23-year-old shortstop. Ayutsa Kawakana, Seichi Uchikawa in left field. Yoshino Itoi is in right field. Atsunori Inaba is the first baseman. Hisayoshi Chono out in center field. Takashi Toritani is at second base. Ryoji Aikawa will do the catching, and he is in for Shinosuke Abe. And Nobuhiro Matsuda is at third base. And there on the mound is Rafael Fernandez for Brazil. 
Fernandez is 26 years old and you can see he pitched for the Yakult Swallows in the Japanese Central League but he spent just a couple of games up in the big leagues he's pitched basically in the minor league since 2009 he's got an eight and eight career record and just over 130 innings of work but Barry Larkin the manager believes this is a great showcase for him to prove that he's worthy of promotion to the major leagues here in Japan and he is not going to be rattled by this atmosphere not overpowering but you mentioned it Rich he came off a great game in in Panama to push them to this final and Barry Larkin also told us that his defense has to do the little things right throughout this tournament yeah if they can't make any mistakes and it's Maga Yais in left Orlando in center with great speed and Munoz in right field Okuda and Lurin up the middle a great double play combination Okuda had a great series down in Panama Reginato is the best player on their team he is playing in the minor league system with Tampa Bay Rays and he is quite an athlete Matsumoto is the captain of the team he's at first base and Francia is the catcher there are some fascinating dynamics working in this ball game in particular you've got Barry Larkin who's been working with Brazil for the past three years now baseball in Brazil was flourished because of Japanese immigrants so there are players of Japanese ancestry that are playing for Brazil as you pointed out some of them actually play in Japan and here they are taking on the two time champs yeah, the Yakult Swallows of the Central League has an academy in Brazil and a lot of these kids have come through it and there you see Koji Yamamoto the Japanese manager he's a Japanese Hall of Fame center fielder they hit over 500 home runs and he understands what's at stake here. Japan has won the first two tournaments and there's a lot of pressure on him to make it three in a row. There are seven Yomayuri Giants on this Japanese team. The Giants were the champions last year here in Japan and Brazil played the Giants two nights ago in an exhibition game and it was very telling because Brazil pitched inside and had success and here we go. Ayato Sakamoto leads it off and a fastball misses up and Pule is underway Rafael Fernandez the 26 year old facing Sakamoto Sakamoto at 24 he's the shortstop of the Tokyo Giants he's a good hitter that uses the whole field and you can see the first pitch from Fernandez was up and in indeed a fastball that is popped up. Daniel Matsumoto calls for it and Matsumoto makes the catch. The captain the leader for Japan is not in there. Shinosuke Abe their catcher as Buck pointed out he's got a sore knee. He did practice yesterday. He looked good in batting practice today. Yeah he banged up his knee last Wednesday and they're still going to give him a couple of days. We met with the manager who suggested that Abe is going to miss the first two games of this tournament. Katsuya Kakanaka. He is the designated hitter. And Kakanaka, the 25 year old. Fernandez with a fastball for a strike. One of the things Fernandez did quite well when he was in that qualifier, he used an economy of pitches. And that's very important tonight as he makes this start because he's limited in this first round to 65 pitches. Yeah, pitch efficiency is really paramount in this tournament. And you can see once again another strike inside. And you saw where Diego Franca, the catcher for Barry Larkin, set up. He was set up in. In and down. Now the catcher for both of these teams is not here in some way because Jan Gomes a major leaguer was the catcher for this Brazilian team in that Panama qualifier Gomes is not here in this tournament yeah, and Gomes drove in the only run in a one to nothing win so both significant catchers for each team not present in this game tonight. Gomes chose to stay with his team the Cleveland Indians during spring training and not play in this tournament one two pitch got him change up and a good one and Fernandez has come out 
and retire the first two hitters. Well, this is important for Brazil to come out and, and just go right at these hitters. He set this change up by pounding inside with the fastball. He got cuts curb coming to swing at that change up because he was a little bit aware of the inner half of the plate. Seichi Uchikawa, the left fielder. As we told you, this Japan lineup is filled with stars from the Japanese leagues, and Uchikawa certainly qualifies as that. He's only the second hitter in Japanese history to win a batting title in both the Pacific and the Central, and high and tight is the first pitch to him. Yeah, and Japan was so conscious of being pitched inside, they brought it up at the technical meeting before the start of this game. They called it dangerous pitches. They were very aware of dangerous pitches, and once again, this pitch is destined to come inside. Brazil knows that they can't match up in talent with this team, so they're going to have to get into the heads of the hitters, and they've already done it through the first three spots in this lineup. 2 0 oh to Uchikawa, the number three hitter. Japan, obviously, the crowd behind this Japanese team but they are the visiting team and leading off this game at the top of the first and Fernandez misses up high it's a loud crowd it's a festive crowd if you've never been to a game in Japan lots of noise lots of fun and lots of pressure on this Japanese team well, when the Japanese team hits they have a band that leads the cheering and they play and they have the drums and the bands going and the fans have orchestrated cheers and you're going to hear that throughout tonight. Three and to Uchikawa. And maybe going up and in on Uchikawa. Forced Fernandez to lose the strike zone a little bit because he's walked him and he's going to face the cleanup hitter. Yoshio Itoi. Now you can see Fernandez let one get away there and maybe a little bit too conscious of intimidating the hitters and now he's got to deal with the left handed hitting Itoi. Itoi. 31 year old hit 304 with a 404 on base percentage. In his past season. And a foul back to the screen. Both Look. managers talked about trying to manufacture runs, stealing bases, hitting and running, not having a whole lot of power on either side. Yeah, and you expect this game to be a low scoring game because Japan doesn't have the power that they've had in the past. And this guy right here, Abe, hit 27 home runs and drove in 100 last year, and he hit 340. So that's a big bat to have out of the lineup. He would probably be hitting in the cleanup spot right here. And he was the MVP for the Giants. Popped up over for it is Reginato. And Rafael Fernandez, very importantly, comes out and sets the tone for Brazil. Bottom of the first coming up, we are scoreless. Scoreless ball game, Pool A has begun here in Fukuoka. And Brazil, the home team of this ball game, comes to the plate. And they'll do so in this order. Paulo Orlando is in center field. Felipe Burin at second base. Leo Reginato, maybe the best player Brazil has, hits third. Daniel Matsumoto is their captain. Reginald Sato, the designated hitter. Thiago Magais in left field. Juan Carlos Muniz in right field. Diego Franza is the catcher, and Pedro Okuda is the shortstop. And it's Makun Tanaka with a fastball that misses down low, and it's 1 0 to Orlando. Tanaka's first start in the WBC. He was part of the 2009 team, but he pitched in relief and was used sparingly, so this is his first opportunity to start for Team Japan in the Classic. He was dominant last year. 90 miles an hour on that fastball right at the letters. And this is the definition of dominant. An ERA last year of 1.27.
And his 1 1 pitch coming up to Paulo Orlando. Breaking ball off the end of the bat, and it squirts out into shallow right. Brazil has a base runner, and on his way to second base is Orlando, and he gets there. Well, Orlando is electric. He's got a lot of speed, and he had a big triple down in the qualifier to set up a run. And right there, he went off the end of the bat. It looked like a slider, and he hit it past the first baseman, but because he runs so well, he put pressure on the second baseman. There you can see the breaking ball down and away off the end of the bat. And the second baseman got to it through it wide of the mark because of the speed of Orlando and he was flying. It will go as a base hit and a throwing error on the second baseman. Barry Larkin told us today that for Team Brazil the offense is get them on get them over get them in. Well Orlando is on and here is Felipe Burin the number two hitter. Boy if you don't think the Brazil team is sky high right now they got their leadoff man on indeed in scoring position for the switch hitter Burin who can really handle the bat. He's bunting. And Tanaka misses inside. When Barry Larkin rejoined this team in Brazil, what he did was he set up situations just like this and repeatedly had his players execute fundamentally. They should be able to move this runner up 90 feet. He spent two weeks on that with runner at second, get him over. Runner at first, hit and run. Bunting when everyone knows you're going to bunt. And Boreen trying to get it in play. And move Orlando to third. And he takes ball two. It should be noted that as dominant as Tanaka has been in his career, his last two weeks have not been real good. In exhibition play, he's not been sharp. And many feel it's the baseball he's throwing. This is a regulation Major League Baseball. And that's not the type of ball they use in Japan. A drive to right, and that's hit well. Itoy makes the catch at the track and that will get him over. Boy Boreen really put a charge into it. Orlando is at third with one out. Boy Orlando almost made a big mistake. He thought that ball was going to get over the head of the right fielder. When this ball goes off the bat Orlando's got to go immediately back to second and tag. You can see the catch by Itoy in right. Only because Orlando has such great speed was he able to retrace his steps and indeed Berin advanced Orlando over to third. And here we are already with high drama and it's only the bottom of the first. You've got Brazil with a runner at third and one out. Tanaka maybe the ace of this entire tournament facing Leo Reginato with the infield in. Fastball, ground ball, base hit, and Brazil is on the board first. Well, we told you Reginato was the best player for Brazil, and he delivers on the first pitch. And just like that, the momentum is dramatically in Brazil's corner. Reginato, according to Barry Larkin, will be the next Brazilian big leaguer, and he looks like it here attacking this fastball. Reginato in the Tampa Bay organization. He spent last year at Hudson Valley. He was an all star in the New York Penn League. Now he's at first, and here is Daniel Matsumoto, the captain. And Matsumoto takes inside. Here's the reaction of the Brazilian bench as Orlando comes in to score the first run of the tournament for Brazil to give them that one run lead early. Runner bluffs and it's down low. This is a team in Brazil that in Panama and from what we've seen in the exhibition games here and in our meetings has taken the attitude of their manager Barry Larkin as he told us in facing Team Japan 
we do not genuflect to anyone. And he felt that was very important to impart on his team because of the connection from Japanese baseball to Brazilian baseball. Yeah, and because so many of his young players perceive Japan professional baseball is their major leagues because they have such the dramatic tie to Japanese baseball. No sense of awe here. Brazil is up one nothing. And Tanaka with a fastball for a strike. Let's go back and talk a little bit about the baseball. You mentioned that Tanaka's having trouble with his command. And that has been the case. The baseball that they're using in the tournament is a major league baseball, which is slicker than the traditional Japanese professional baseball. And many of these starting pitchers have had problems with the grip of that baseball. Matsumoto with a ground ball out to second to Tani to Sakamoto. And Japan turns two, but Brazil is on the board. They get a run against Tanaka. It's one nothing. One nothing Brazil on top of the two time defending World Baseball Classic champion Japan and obviously Japan at home here in Fukuoka. Their ace has given up a run. Atanori Inaba is up now and Rafael Fernandez back on the mound with a one nothing lead. Yeah this is a big inning for Fernandez to put up a zero and just keep the momentum in that Brazilian dugout. You don't want to have Japan come right back after Brazil has taken a one nothing lead. Now Inaba plays for the Nippon Ham Fighters and he's 40. He is uh, the elder statesman for Japan. Despite that age, he put up good numbers last year. 290 hitter and 22 doubles. Plus, he picked up his 2,000th career hit in the season, a great milestone. Francis setting up inside, and Fernandez misses up. Rafael Fernandez is 26. He's played in Japan since 2006 when he came over to play college ball, signed with the occult. And as you pointed out, a great honor to pitch for Brazil to open against Japan and a great opportunity for him. Fastball, ground ball, foul ball. Matsumoto got over to the line. Well, it's a great opportunity for Fernandez because he is pitching in the Coke minor leagues. So if he comes out here and pitches very well against Team Japan, Everybody that's a fan of your Colts going to say wait a minute. What about Fernandez. Why don't you promote him in the big leagues. Give him an opportunity to establish himself in the major leagues here in Japan. Because this is the equivalent of a guy in the minor leagues coming up and beating the National League All Star team. Exactly. Two and two to Inaba. Change up. And it's popped up shallow right center late break in center by Orlando and he gets there and makes the catch the Brazilian players were able to play a game in this dome and get accustomed to the lights and Barry Larkin felt that was very important for his outfielders. Yeah and it's one thing you want to do is always get indoors and take as many fly balls as possible. But right here you can see Naba out on that front foot out in front of the off speed pitch and he hits it high into the air. Fernandez has good defense behind him. We mentioned the infield defense in the qualifier in Panama back in November played very well. And Orlando in center field has a awful lot of speed to cover a lot of ground. Here is Hisayoshi Chono. And he takes a fastball up. That's Chris Guccione behind home plate. With a, an umpiring crew with Poon Ki Kim, Alfonso Marquez out at second. Carlos Ray is the third base umpire just like the teams in the classic there's a fastball that's in the teams in the classic you have umpires from all over the country Guccione and Marquez in Major League Baseball Kim from Korea and Ray from Puerto Rico. Now, there are three Major League umpires in this pool the third umpire is Jerry Davis and the three of those umpires will rotate there will be two of the three American 
umpires in every game during this pool here in Pupo. Here's the 2-0 pitch. 88 miles an hour, the fastball for a strike. Now Fernandez has spotted his changeup and been able to get a couple of fly ball outs with it. He has not hesitated to pitch inside to this Japanese team. And as we noted two nights ago in the exhibition game when Brazil faced the Yomiuri Giants, they pitched inside, in fact hit a batter. Japan retaliated and the Japanese team watching that game realized what they were up against and what they would expect tonight. And they've gotten it so far. Here's the 3 1 coming to Chono. Hit deep left field. Magais has room and he makes the catch. There is no bigger figure in Japanese baseball than this man. Sadahara, oh, the great home run hitter that was a terrific player for the Tokyo Giants in his day. And you can see he was the manager of the Japan team in 2006, the inaugural WBC, and he and I exchanged lineup cards in Anaheim in the second round of the 2006 tournament. And tonight he opened up this great tournament by throwing out the first pitch. 868 career home runs, and the Asadahara O Baseball Museum is right here in this building here in Fukuoka. And a strike to Takahashi Toritani. This ballpark, though not overly big in dimensions, is made much larger by a 19-foot wall from foul pole to foul pole. So you really got to hit it to get it out of here. Yeah, it's a big yard, and you mentioned the dimensions, but that 19-foot wall is pretty difficult. And the Japanese team doesn't have a lot of power. And again, we hate to harp on it, but Abe, their MVP catcher, is on the bench. He's got 27 home runs from last season, and they miss his pop in the lineup. One and one to the second baseman, Toritani. Of course, Cuba, in batting practice the other day, made this place look very, very small. Cuba hitting BP looked like the Detroit Tigers. <laughs> They have some tremendous hitters in their lineup, and we will see them tomorrow. 2 1 pitch. It's up, and that's where Fernandez has missed when he has missed so far. Well, he's got to get back down in the strike zone and be a little more economical in his pitches. That's what he did so effectively against Panama when he beat them 1 to nothing. He pitched into the sixth inning, gave them six innings. And face just three over the minimum. That is his 27th pitch. And his second walk. Now 65 is the limit. And Barry Larkin told us today one of the best things he did in that clincher against Panama was not waste pitches and get six innings in that start. He got six shutout innings in that start. Yeah, he gave up just two hits and one walk and we mentioned just three batters over the minimum so he was very efficient against a pretty powerful lineup that included Carlos Ruiz Ruben Rivera and El Caballo was there Carlos yeah, Lee Carlos Lee as well Briote Aikawa and Fernandez that one gets away and moving into scoring position is Toritani with two outs. Well, Francia had a tough pitch to him. It was a ball well out in front of home plate. And what happened was Rafael Fernandez used the slide step because he was afraid of the runner at first base and buried it right in the dirt in front of home plate. So a wild pitch. Barry Larkin's going to characterize that as a mistake. Because a two out walk and then the wild pitch, and all of a sudden Japan has a chance to tie up the ball game. And again, Fernandez misses up. That's Diago Caldera, the pitching coach that Larkin's talking to, and you can see they're 
talking about why Fernandez has thrown so many pitches upstairs. Generally, from a catcher's perspective, what you'll do is call a breaking ball to get him to follow through and bring him back down into the strike zone. Spoken like a true catcher. Been there before. And he same pitch upstairs. He's missing in the same spot. And as he continues to miss, his pitch count starts to soar. And on his way out is Caldera. If you're just joining us, and I know wherever you are throughout the world, you come in and out of ball games. If you've happened upon this one, you've got the Cinderella of the tournament, Brazil, a team that had to qualify and did so in stunning fashion by upsetting Panama in Panama. They have a Hall of Fame manager in Barry Larkin. And who do they get for their first game of the World Baseball Classic? The two time defending champs here in Fukuoka, Japan. And Brazil has come out, put a run on the board, and has a 1 0 lead. Rafael Fernandez is having trouble throwing strikes. That one's right down the middle. He has been so aware of trying to establish the inside pitch, he's gotten away from throwing strikes. Good speed with Toritani at second. Speed pitch, and he gets a strike. It's three and two. Yeah, that was a pretty good pitch. He's got the hitter's count. Hitter expecting to get a fastball and gets an off-speed pitch. You can see he's way out in front. Uh, Cowell with a big wild swing, thinking he was going to get a heater. Well, he's used that changeup to get out. Let's see if he has the, the confidence to throw it three-two. He threw it three and one. The three-two. He threw it again off speed pitch. Pretty interesting. You saw Diego Francia, the catcher, initially set up inside. And then he moved to the outside as he had called for the changeup. But with the runner at second base, Francia was very aware that they might be relaying position. Well, there's a lot of intrigue and a lot of suspicion uh, in every camp here in Pool A. We had an incident yesterday where during Cuba's batting practice there was a reportedly a Japanese scout standing behind the cage that was chased away by the Cuban contingent. Another 3 2 coming. Uh, he stayed with a fastball and he missed up. Even if Japan does not score a run in this inning it's been a damaging inning for Rafael Fernandez as his pitch count shoots higher. 65 is the limit in the first round. Yeah and this is a real challenge for a manager as you're trying to figure out where you go next. You map out your pitching rotation for a particular game and it changes with the score dramatically. Of course Brazil has an early lead and it's very early in the ball game but you can bet Barry Larkin's already starting to think about how he is going to get to his bullpen should Fernandez continue to throw a lot of pitches. Thirty four pitches and Fernandez is not out of the second inning. Nobuhiro Matsuda the number nine hitter runners first and second. Drive the left deep Magallis at the track makes the catch the crowd came to their feet. The ballpark held it and Fernandez gets out of the second one nothing Brazil in Fukuoka. It is a one nothing lead for Brazil and certainly that is a surprise here in Fukuoka. So the bottom of the second rolls around second look at Makun Tanaka as he's known here in Japan and Tanaka's breaking ball is swung on and missed. Reynaldo Sato, the designated hitter, Tiago Magallis, and Juan Carlos Muniz will follow for Brazil. Now the breaking ball, that one was upstairs and got fouled straight back. Tanaka certainly has created a lot of attention 
in the United States by Major League Ball Clubs. They're really keeping an eye on him, and it has a lot to do with his arm strength. Ground ball. Matsuda across the diamond. Now, many in the United States are, are watching him. There's probably some scouts watching, but uh, a lot of them are actually here in Fukuoka. Yeah, there's a lot of Major League scouts here looking at Tanaka. Plus, there's a lot of very good talent on the Cuban team, and everybody wants to see what's out there. But there are probably 50 Major League scouts here tonight because Tanaka's starting this game. Brazil got a run in the first. Tanaka threw just 12 pitches in that first inning and a fastball up to Tiago Magalhães. Magalhães spent five years in the Reds organization and he's laid on a fastball. Magalhães has tremendous power. He hit balls out to the opposite field power alley with ease all throughout batting practice and when he pulled them he really put a charge in but he's got a lot of juice in that bat. Good breaking ball. It's one and two. Great late movement. That might have been a splitter. The ball bounced in the dirt. A lot of late action on it. It's funny today in our conversation with Koji Yamamoto, we asked him, what does Tanaka throw? Well, a fastball, a breaking ball, and then lots of other pitches. And many others. <laughs> Much like uh, Daisuke Matsuzaka, the two time MVP of the World Baseball Classic. There's a drive in his center field, and that falls for a base hit. Brazil already has three hits and a run against Tanaka. And remember, Tanaka's ERA was under two last year 1.87. But you can see Tanaka rubbing up that baseball, and this is the baseball on the left is the world baseball, classic baseball, more like an official baseball of the major leagues. The ball on the right is the Japanese professional baseball that's only been uniformed the last two seasons. It's a smaller ball, and the cover of that baseball is a little tackier than the major league baseball. A little blooper, and that's going to get into left field. Diego Franza, the catcher, dumps one into left field. So a pair of hits. Actually, that was Juan Carlos Muñiz. Franza hitting now. And now Team Japan with some concern for Tanaka. So Magalhães and Muñiz with base hits. Franza, the catcher, is the hitter now. And pitching coach with a quick message to Tanaka. And you can see the manager, Koji Yamamoto, on the bench talking with another coach. And if you're wondering about the bullpens, whether there's any action in the bullpens, we don't know. They are underneath the stands behind the respective dugouts. So the pitchers could be warming up as we speak. The teams have cameras to watch their pitcher pitch, but the opposing teams don't have cameras in those dugouts to see which pitcher is warming up, whether he's right-handed or left-handed. Here is Franza now, and with Magalhães at second, Muñiz at first, and Tanaka in a bit of trouble. And he goes back to that breaking ball, a good sharp slider. And there is a lefty up. Seguchi, the lefty, is up. He's not really throwing in earnest, but it looks like they have him up just yeah, in case. Just kind of getting loose and getting into the mindset of getting in this ball game. Ground ball slowly hit. Sakamoto flips it to Itani's turn. A double play, the second double play that Japan has turned, and Tanaka gets out of the second. Still, a surprise here, 1-0 Brazil. one nothing Brazil on top of Japan. We go to the third here 
in Fukuoka. Fans, make sure you visit worldbaseballclassic.com. Bookmark it as your one stop source for news, video highlights, online shopping, jerseys, caps, collectibles, and more. 24 hours a day, you can gear up worldbaseballclassic.com. Accessible on your computer, tablet, or Buck Martinez smartphone. On to the third, and the story here so far has been Rafael Fernandez keeping Japan off the scoreboard. Brazil scratching out a run against the ace of Team Japan, Makun Tanaka. 1 0 fastball sails high. It's the top of the order. Tanaka hoping that uh, Ayato Sakamoto can get on base and that Japan could get something going. Tanaka has been very efficient with his pitches. His pitch count is in real good shape, and that's not the case for Fernandez. And you can see the catcher, Francia, just went out to the mound to have a chat with him. Tanaka's only thrown 23 pitches in two innings, so he's in good shape. And now Fernandez, this will be number 38 for him. That's the irony here is that Brazil has the lead, but their pitcher has almost double the amount of pitches. And Tanaka. Pitch number 39 coming, the 2 1 pitch. Line into center field. That's a base hit. Orlando plays it on a hop, and Japan is in business. Sakamoto with the first hit of the ball game for Japan. Well, you can see that got the crowd back into it. They have been a little bit down as they are surprised to be trailing in this game, but. Sakamoto can really swing them out. That's another mistake. The pitch was elevated and he hammered it into center field. In the last exhibition game, he had four hits, including a two run double. And he hits the ball to all parts of the field, but that was a cookie right out over the plate. Here is Katsuya Kakanaka. Kakanaka, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Don't be surprised if they bunt here, just trying to get this runner in scoring position. He bunts and a good one. Fernandez makes the play and just gets Kakunaka. Now this Japanese team will move the runners along. They're going to play station to station baseball. We mentioned they don't have a lot of power, so after the leadoff single to start the inning, Yamamoto put the bunt on and they executed it perfectly. It's ironic too because Yamamoto was a manager that didn't live by the little ball. He hit a ton of home runs in his career. Hit over 500 home runs and he's in the Japanese Hall of Fame as a power hitting center fielder. So you got two Hall of Fame managers here in Koji Yamamoto and Barry Larkin. And now Japan turns to their left fielder, Seichi Uchikawa. As we noted, Uchikawa, a batting champ in both the Central and the Pacific League. And up and in, it may have gotten a piece. It did. It gets a piece of Uchikawa, and he's aboard. Fernandez has been in all night long. He's thrown 41 pitches as Rafael Fernandez and again his pitch count the limit is 65 in the first round. Yeah you can see this brushes the elbow of Uchikawa and he will go to first base and this is what happened when Brazil played the SoftBank Hawks in an exhibition game. They got back and forth beanball war and uh, during the technical meeting before the start of this tournament. Team Japan mentioned that they weren't too happy of the dangerous pitches as they referred to them. You spent your whole career facing dangerous pitches, but <laughs> that was part of our game for sure. He toy now. And a strike. Now he toy the right fielder. Hitting Uchikawa does set up a shot at a double play for Fernandez and Brazil to get out of the inning. There was a line to get into the dome 
at about two o'clock this afternoon. The game starting seven o'clock local time here in Fukuoka. Change up and it's one and one. We mentioned the defense up the middle for Brazil is very good. Pedro Okuda, the shortstop, and Felipe Marin, the second baseman, really can't turn the double play. And they'd love to have a ground ball right now. There you see Tanaka throwing in between innings. Obviously, not really comfortable with what he's doing so far. His command has been off, but he's been able to induce two double play ground balls that have helped him get out of those first two innings. Check swing and no swing. He held it. It's two and one. Once again, another pitch inside, and Toy was able to hold up, not offer at that pitch. And one thing Fernandez has done, he's really made the Japanese hitters aware of that inside pitch. Two one is laced in the right field. A base hit Munoz up with it around third and headed home is Sakamoto and he will score. This game is tied. And Uchikawa was able to get to third on the play. And the captain Abe with encouragement from the bench. Went to the well once too often, and that fastball ran back out over the plate. And Sakamoto is able to score easily from second base, and we are tied. Three walks, a hit batter in this inning, a couple of hits. And Japan is tied it. Uh, and that's what Barry Larkin had talked about. They needed to play clean baseball, and certainly three walks and a hit batter is not what you would call clean baseball. They've given Japan too many opportunities without giving them many hits. And now in Naba, the 40-year-old, in his home stadium in Sapporo, when he comes to the plate, the crowd shakes. He's getting the same treatment here in Fukuoka right now. This is always a challenge for a starting pitcher. I don't care where you're playing. Second time through the order. Where the batters have a little bit better feel for what they're dealing with. They know now that Fernandez is going to try to pound them inside. They haven't seen an awful lot of good breaking balls from him. So they're taking a shot looking fastball in her half and trying to do some damage. At the corners and one out. And Fernandez missing up. He really hasn't been able to get a lot of ground balls at all so far. In fact, only the sacrifice bunt. That's the lone ground ball out. Everything else has been in the air. Because he's been up, he hasn't been able to get that bottom of the strike zone pitch down at all. He misses up in the end. Two and one. He just hasn't been able to get his timing down to get the ball down. Everything he has thrown has been up, and it's very flat. He's pushing the ball the whole plate, and that's why it stays up in a bad spot. Not only is it out of the strike zone, but when it is in the strike zone, it becomes very hittable. Again, first round. Of the World Baseball Classic, the pitch limit is 65. Barry Larkin saw his team jump to a 1 0 lead. Rafael Fernandez, who threw six shutout innings at Panama, in Panama, in Rod Carew Stadium, has given up a run here. And Japan's looking for more. Infield back for two. Fernandez just hasn't been able to get his secondary pitches over consistently. We saw him get some outs early in the ballgame with the changeup, but he has not been able to get to it because he can't find the strike zone with his fastball. 
You talked about the difference in baseball for Tanaka and that being an issue for the Japanese pitchers. The Brazilian team and the Brazilian leagues use the Major League Baseball. They use the Rawlings ball so there's no change for the Brazilian pitching staff. Swing breaking ball. Did he go? Yes, he did. And there's a, a secondary pitch that gets a strike. Runs the count full. Mario Govea is up for Brazil. Govea pitched so well in game one of that qualifier in November. He retired the first 10 batters he faced, and now they're going to get up a lefty as well. And it looks like it might be. Kesley Kondo, the left hander that they lean heavily on in situational matchups. Full count. Fernandez facing the, the veteran Inaba. And the likelihood that Itoy will be moving here. Runner goes and it's fouled off and out of play. You know it, it brings into questions we've we've seen both bullpens in this sequence. The relief pitchers are secluded from this bubbling cauldron of fans here. It, it, it has to be just a, a, a really odd feeling to warm up in silence feel the vibrations and then if you're called upon walk into the stadium. Yeah it's totally different than. We are used to for sure where you can see the bullpens they can see the field from the bullpen and it's a different case. This is underground behind the respective dugouts. Along at bat. Fernandez battling. With Atenori Inaba. And he continues to try to keep a toy close at first. Well the one thing that Brazil can ill afford to do is fall behind early. Japan has a terrific bullpen loaded with great arms. Brazil has a limited resources down in their bullpen. 3 2 to Inaba. Runner goes, swing and a miss. The throw down to second. A stolen base. The toy gets there. Fernandez, the strikeout of Inaba. But Japan has runners second and third. And two outs. Well, it's a big strikeout. It looked like a little bit of a cut fastball that ran inside. The throw from Francia is offline, and the toy steals it easily. So now Japan has two runners in score. The center fielder, number 34, Hisayoshi Chono. Hisayoshi Chono. Chono flied to left field. A deep fly ball. Japan's actually hit two balls deep to left. Both of them coming in that second inning. Chono and the number nine hitter, Matsuda. If Fernandez can get out of this mess of an inning with just the one run, Brazil's going to have to, to feel pretty good about that. Yeah, it's been a tough inning for him. He's thrown a lot of pitches this inning. His pitch counts up to 53. So he's getting close to the end of the night. What he can ill afford to do right now is leave one up out over the plate. It'll cost him two runs if he makes a mistake. One out Chono is a strike. One and one. Japan has a run to tie it and runners at second and third with two outs. Breaking ball foul back. This pitch count situation really makes the game different. You can see the left hander is really starting to heat it up. There's a left hander on deck in Turatani and there's a base open at first base. In a traditional game without consideration of a pitch count you wouldn't even think about walking in here in this situation righty on righty. 
But because Fernandez is getting close to the end of his night, tiring a little bit, making mistakes, you might get to the point where you'd walk him and bring in the fresh left-hander to pitch for the left-hander in this situation. Oscar Nakayoshi is that fresh left-hander. There we go, one and two. Uchikawa and Inaba out in scoring position. Breaking ball, fly ball, center field. Orlando is there, and he makes the catch. Japan gets a run, but leaves two in scoring position. To the bottom of the third in Fukuoka, Japan and Brazil, 1-1. those scouts that uh, came to watch Makun Tanaka can uh, put away their clipboard because Tanaka and this is a real surprise is out of the ball game after just two innings. Yeah it's just 23 pitches but it might be a little bit of strategy on the part of Team Japan to minimize on his pitch count so he can pitch deeper into the tournament as we go along. So now in a 1 1 ball game, they have gone to their bullpen, which is very deep, as we mentioned. The shortstop, number 44, Pedro. Toshia Sugiuchi comes out of that bullpen. A little lefty. Takes over for Koji Yamamoto's team. And Sugiuchi is a starter as well in the regular season. In fact, he pitched a no hitter last year for Yomiuri. And a fastball, a strike. Pedro Okuda, the shortstop for Brazil, and the number nine hitter. And then it's top of the order, Paulo Orlando and Felipe Burin. Well, Brazil had opportunities in both the first and the second. They got a run in the first. They had a couple of hits but did not score in the second. And it was a pair of double play balls that got Tanaka out of trouble both times. A ball and a strike. The one thing that they have done when they put this team together for Japan is they really went to a lot of starters. We mentioned Sugiuchi was a starter. He was 12 and 4 last year for the champion Yomiuri Giants and pitched 163 innings. So he's got some length coming into this ball game and he can pitch two or three innings if he's really throwing the ball well and he can get up to that 65 pitch limit. Now many people would say well 163 innings that's not a, a big workload but remember in Japan it's a hundred and forty two game schedule and so starting pitchers end up with what, 25 26 starts and so that is a, a, a nice workload for yeah. a starter. Yeah he made 24 starts last year and really had a good season 172 strikeouts in that Span of 163 innings. And he finishes off Pedro Cuda with an 86 mile an hour fastball. Now he does a good job of freezing Okuda. He had set this fastball up with a pretty good breaking ball, and Okuda just couldn't pull the trigger. Number 16. Spotted it on the Paolo outer half. Good is a strikeout victim. That's the first strikeout for Team Japan tonight. And the surprise is that Tanaka didn't have a one. He struck out 169 and led his league last year. And here's Orlando. He started that first inning with an infield hit to the right side. And he smacks that one in the air to center field. Chono comes on. And he makes the catch. Here are your tournament rules. Pitch limits by round 65 in the first. Second round to 80. And if you get to San Francisco, you get 95. Now, if a pitcher throws 50 or more pitches in a game, he can't pitch until a minimum of four days have passed. And a pitcher cannot pitch in three consecutive days. So certainly the rules are in place to protect pitchers who are getting ready. Most of them are getting ready for their seasons sort of a spring training type that is very different than the team that we will see tomorrow 1230 local time in Cuba. Cuba their season is a winter season. It goes from November through April. 
We asked their manager, Victor Mesa, why they don't play in the summer. He very frankly said it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. But they're in great shape, obviously, because their season just ended. And that Cuba team is really fun to watch. They can swing the bats. We've got some terrific players, and we will see them tomorrow. Sugiuchi misses, and we will see them against Brazil. That's one of the uh, quirks of Pool A is that Brazil opens with Japan tonight and Cuba tomorrow. In the air towards the line, Itoy makes the catch. And Sugiuchi comes in and goes one, two, three through Brazil. It's 1-1. One, one. The opening of Pool A in Fukuoka, Japan, and we've got a good one, a 1-1 ball game, Brazil and Japan, and both managers have gone to their bullpen already. Gorilo Govea, tall right-hander, minor league player in the Houston Astro organization, he is out there right now. He pitched in A ball last year in Lexington, and he went 2-7. Pitched very well in the qualifier in November in Panama. Pitched a total of five and two thirds innings and allowed just two hits. Trying to keep the Japanese team in check here in the fourth. Takashi Toritani, the second baseman for Japan. Toritani walked back in the second. Japan had opportunities in the first and the second. Finally got a run in the third. To left. Micah East has had a busy night so far, and he makes the catch. If you've just joined us, here's your game summary. Brazil, of course, the darling of the tournament with that qualifier stunner over Panama, walked into a full house here and got a run early. Japan tying it in the third, and the ace of this staff, maybe the ace of the, the tournament, the guy everyone wanted to see, Makun Tanaka, was not sharp. He got two double plays to get out of trouble in his two innings. He did give up an unearned run. Yeah, he gave up four hits, and he was not sharp. His command was off, and that has been the case with him throughout the exhibition games and into his first start in this tournament. Govea with a strike, and it's one and one. Ryoji Akawa. The catcher. Many of you who follow Japanese baseball, if you're just happening by, might be thinking, where is Shinosuke Abe, the uh, captain of Team Japan? Well, Abe has been nursing a knee injury the last three days. The newspapers here in Japan, every headline was about Abe and would he play? How's the knee? How would Japan be without him? During pregame batting practice, he came out and hit and looked very good to me. And I thought for sure he had a little jump in his step. He was excited to be on the field. I thought he'd play, but not the case. Now Govea walks Ayakawa. The second time that Ayakawa has reached base. Koji Yamamoto, the manager for Japan, told us before the ball game, he'd like to hit and run, he'd like to steal some bases, but he said we got to get guys on first. To do that, he's been able to. Japan's been able to get guys on base. That's the fourth walk they've drawn. They've been hit on one occasion, and they have a couple of hits. Yeah. Right now, the Brazilian pitchers are giving the Japanese team too many opportunities, too many base runners, and if they don't stop it soon, they're going to give up some runs. Govea pitched very well. We mentioned his performance in the qualifier in November in Panama. He came into game one and retired the first 10 batters he faced, and he had a stint of three and two thirds innings of scoreless relief against Panama. And I think it shows if, if you're Barry Larkin how important 
this game is to Brazil. The fact that number one he had a one nothing lead and it's a one one game that he backs Fernandez up with Gobey. Because if if Govea goes for three or four innings here he may not have either Fernandez or Govea for the rest of this pool. Yeah and that's a big loss two of your top pitchers one and done if you will and that's uh, they don't have the depth to overcome that. But the way it's set up they've got Brazil or rather Brazil's got Cuba tomorrow at 1230 and then they'll play China later in the week. And so Brazil can't wait around for things to happen. They have to make it happen for themselves. Right. And right now, Barry Larkin finds himself in a 1 1 ball game. He's just, you can see the wheels are spinning trying to figure out who's next. He's going to have to go into that bullpen. He's trying to piece it together. Smoke down the third baseline and into the corner. It kicks back out to Magaiz and held to a single is Matsuda. A fortunate bounce. For Brazil, because Matsuda had that one ticketed for the corner. As it is, runners at first and third and one out. Yeah, it's kind of funny the way this ball caromed off the wall. It looked like it was going to go all the way down into the corner. And Matsuda drills it, and it's just inside the line down the third base line. And you can see how it hit that corner and came out to the left fielder. Magalhães, who was able to get it back into the infield quick enough to keep the double play in order. Japan has a run, but they've left seven the on start. base. Number six, Ayato Sakamoto. They got Sakamoto, who has good speed. He's not easy to double up. Govea has been working the lower half of the strike zone and seems to be a, a better candidate to get a double play ground ball. That one's in the air though not too deep. Magaiz lines it up tagging it third is Aikawa. Here he comes the throw coming to the plate. He's in there. Sakamoto delivers 2 1 Japan. Ball wasn't that deep in left field, but Maga Yeast, the left fielder, got static, got underneath the ball, and has no momentum whatsoever going toward home plate. So the runner at third tags Hayakawa, and he scores easily, but Maga Yeast has the arm strength, but he had no momentum taking him toward the plate. The money, the throw was on the money, but just late at home. The designated hitter now with a runner at second. Katsuya Kakanaka. And Kakanaka takes a strike. And of course, with the throw that came all the way to the plate, Matsuda, the runner at first, took second. Here's the 0 1. Those extra opportunities that the Brazilian pitchers have given Japan has really hurt them tonight. Base on balls, now a sacrifice fly has given Japan the lead. Both starting pitchers already gone. Popped up behind third, long run, and Okuda can't get there. It's barely foul. Wow. And it wasn't foul by much. Carlos Reyes, the third base umpire, went down the left field line. You can see Yamamoto, a little smile on his face. And man, that was close. We almost got another run right here. Watch the ball as it hits just in foul territory, Ooh. and it didn't miss by much. Now there is replay in the World Baseball Classic, but it is the major league form of replay for home run, fair or foul on home runs. That not a reviewable play. Two and two. Well, 
Bay originally signed with the White Sox. He has now moved to the Houston Astros minor league system. And Mary Larkin feels comfortable with his experience, even though he's still a minor leaguer in the United States. Played for some interesting managers in 2008. Bobby Thigpen was his manager in the White Sox system. Thigpen has now taken over as the bullpen coach for the Chicago White Sox. 2009, Ernie Young was his manager in the minor leagues. And how about his manager in 2011? Stubby Clapp. One of the great names in um, baseball. And he, he played for Team Canada in the WBC. And he is a folk hero in Canada for his play in international baseball for Team Canada. This crowd has been at it from the very start and they do not let up. That one a much easier play Okuda over and there and he makes the catch. But Japan adds a run. Ayato Sakamoto with a sacrifice fly, and now it's 2 1. Japan has a 2 1 lead into the bottom of the fourth. Brazil is the home team in the opener of Pool A in Fukuoka. And Toshia Sigiuchi continues on, though another lefty down below, away from all the noise is warming up in the Japan bullpen. Morifuku. Yeah, they're very deep in their arms in the bullpen, and Koji Yamamoto, the manager, might just want to keep running them out there to make sure he manages their respective pitch counts and keeps everybody active and alive in this tournament. Leo Reginato, the third baseman for Brazil. Daniel Matsumoto, the first baseman, and then Reynaldo Sato, the designated hitter. Those are the three that will come up for Brazil. Now, Team Brazil got a run in the first. They had two singles, but didn't score in the second. Sigiuchi, for his first inning in relief in the third, went one, two, three through him, a strikeout and a pair of fly ball outs. And it was Reginato that drove in the run with a single in the first. And he hits that one to left field and hits it pretty well. To the wall it goes on a hop. Reginato around first and on his way to second. They weren't kidding when they told us he was their best player. He has shown it in his first two at bats. Yeah, Barry Larkin really likes the way Reginato plays. He has played shortstop in the minor leagues. He's playing third base right now, but he's got a little pop in his bat. He drove in the first run of the ball game back in the first inning with an RBI single to left. And this time he turns on a fastball and hits it to the base of the wall in left field. So once again, the Brazilians are threatening to tie the game up. Leadoff man hits the double. And they're coming right back at Japan. Matsumoto now. Matsumoto elected as team captain for that qualifier in Panama. He's been in the uh, Japanese leagues for six years as a reserve for the occult swallows and Larkin said one of the things that moved Larkin to name him captain was the, the combination that he has. And Larkin talked about the combination of Japanese discipline playing here in Japan as a professional and yet that Latin passion for the game and that's what he sees in Matsumoto and that's what he's tried to impart on all of his teams especially the the players that are of Japanese heritage. Now the Japanese baseball players are really used to routine and fundamentals and they have long practices they go over the fundamentals for hours and they are a product of routine. And because of that, they're very fundamentally sound. That's the first question major leaguers have when they come over here and they sign contracts after their prime. They come over to Japan and they'll go to spring training. The first thing they'll say is American workout or Japanese workout. <laughs> 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 
Japanese workout lasts about four hours longer than American workouts. We saw three former Major League players last night in the exhibition game for the the home team the SoftBank Hawks and this is their home ballpark and a couple of them were surprises to us Brian LaHare who was a National League All Star last year for the Chicago Cubs and Vicente Padilla of all people pitching last night he's over here to pitch this season Yeah, William O'Pena is also on the SoftBank team but this is his second year playing here and he loves it here of course he brings power to the game something that there's not a lot of here and it should be noted we talked about two nights ago where there was between Brazil and the Yomiuri Giants a, a beanball war Vicente Padilla was not involved last night he worked two very effective and uneventful innings it's a big moment here for Brazil Matsumoto with a count at three and two he's trying to get Reginato over to third after a leadoff double. Yeah, in a situation like this, once you get yourself into a two strike count, you really have to battle thinking about, at a minimum, advancing that runner from second to third. And of course, as Rich mentioned, that Matsumoto has that mindset of playing for the team. And it's a big battle, lefty on lefty, and he's got to really grind to try to pull the ball to the right side of the infield. Three two. He pulls it but it's foul. So he got a breaking ball and rolled over on it. And once again we must reemphasize that when Barry Larkin rejoined the team down in Brazil they set up situations just like this and repeated at bats. Kept saying OK man a second nobody out get him over. And Larkin once again repeated that drill in batting practice before the start of this game tonight. Matsumoto trying to, to get him over here. Fastball, a one hopper to third. Matsuda across the diamond. And Japan keeps Reginato at second base. So there's one out. Here comes Sato. A reminder, this copyrighted telecast no is presented by the authority of the World Baseball there. Classic no, Incorporated. Hey, no, may not be reproduced Sato. or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent. The World Baseball Classic. 2-1 ball game. Japan on top. Brazil threatening here in the bottom of the fourth. Reynaldo Sato, whose father is on the coaching staff of this Brazilian team. And Sato played in Japan, where he signed as an 18 year old, came over here and played from 99 to 2004, and then he moved to the Industrial League and still plays over here. And the Industrial League is sort of the minor league for the big leagues here in Japan. A 12 team big league. Ball on a strike. One and one. Leo Reginato, the Brazilian third baseman, still out at second and an off speed pitch from Sugiuchi. Sugiuchi in relief, and you can see the grip on that changeup, and he has great arm action and really sells it and has Sato way out in front. Here comes the one two. He didn't go after the changeup. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes. See how he grips the entire baseball. And again, we talked about the difference in the baseballs for these Japanese pitchers. And that was one of the concerns, especially the changeup, because the ball to them feels very slick. And you don't get that same resistance when you throw that changeup. 2 2 pitch. Well, as you pointed out and demonstrated, the Mizuno ball 
is a little smaller. It feels as if the, the seams are a little higher. You talked about the impact on the tournament. It had a profound impact and has had in the last two years on ERAs in Japan. Since they've used that uniform ball, ERAs have plummeted and gone down. Breaking ball, ground ball, base hit, center field. Here comes Reginato. He's got to score. Into second, Dos Sato, and Brazil strikes back. And that section right above the dugout going wild for Brazil. Another change up, but he went to the well once too often. This time with two strikes, Sato sat back, takes it right back up the middle. Reginata with the slide avoids the tag at home plate, and we are tied once again. Now batting. Number 60, Chiaco. That's got to be a great feeling for Sato to deliver the game tying RBI after playing so long here in the minors. Now Micah East with Sato in scoring position. This is a dangerous matchup for Japan. Maga East is very powerful facing a left handed pitcher that's not overpowered. Maga East has power to hit it out anywhere in this ballpark. And if Sugiuchi makes another mistake with one of those off speed pitches, he could be looking at a two run deficit. Sato's at second. Hammered deep, but foul. Well, you were dead on. Well, he's got big time pop, that's for sure. He was just out in front of that and pulled it foul. But this is a matchup that he likes, and you can see he gets his pitch, but out in front a bit. And he's all about power. Sugiuchi, though, is out in front 0 and 2. Change up up the middle on a hop. Sakamoto, one of the best fielding shortstops in Japan, makes the play. Sato will stay at second. And Magais is out number two. Juan Carlos Muniz, who has a base hit, comes to the plate. It's bottom of the fourth, and it's a 2 2 ball game. He and I both talked to Barry Larkin before the game and the one thing that Larkin emphasized to us and to his team throughout his managing this ball club was it doesn't make a difference who you play or where you play but how you play. They got a lead off double. They took advantage. He constantly pointing out to his team to execute cash in when you get the opportunities and they have so far tonight. Well remember in the first they got a runner at second with nobody out. They got him over got him in. And here the double scores on Sato's single. But Sato is at second. And Brazil has an opportunity here to break this tie with two outs. Well that's the thing that's so interesting about the WBC. If Team Japan were to play the Brazilians in a regular season, they'd win nine out of ten games just because of the depth and the caliber of play. But over the course of nine innings, in any given ball game, you never know what might happen. And Larkin addressed that today, and certainly aware of it as well as Koji Yamamoto. Larkin told us you know, there comes a point where you're on the field and you realize that they're ball players just like we are. Well, it looked like Sugiuchi, who's had terrific control, was being very careful with Muniz. I think that's right on the money. You saw the catcher. He was sitting up in the left-handed hitter's batter's box. <laughs> They didn't want anything to do with Muniz in that situation. Diego Franca, the catcher, 
comes up. Masahiko Morifuku is ready. That's the. It's hard to tell if that's the second time he's been up because we can't we can't see him, but we've been told from reliable sources that uh, that is the second time he's been up in the underground bullpen. There is not a subway stop near that bullpen here. So there should be. Franza now, and he takes in. And so Sugiuchi, who looked like he unintentionally, intentionally walked Muniz, trying to find the strike zone now against Franza. With runners first and second. And he can't find it. Yeah, all of a sudden, because he did throw that pitch down and away and walked Munez. Now he can't find the strike zone, and he has fallen behind. The outfield for Japan is really shallow. They don't expect Francia to be able to put the ball in play with much authority. So with two outs and the go ahead run in scoring position in second, they've really shortened up in the outfield. Brenta takes a rip at it. And he fouls it off. So it's two and one. Sugiuchi has thrown 39 pitches in relief. Remember Takanaka, the ace of the Japanese staff, looked rather average in his two innings, gave up an unearned run. Three and one. Left handed hitter on deck in Pedro Kuda. You can see there's a lot of strategy being talked about on the bench as now there's a right hander that has joined the lefty. Setsu, the right hander, has started to throw. Brazil still threatening. To right center, Itoy is there, and he makes the catch. But the Brazilians get a run. They leave a couple. And onto the fifth, it's 2-2. Two -two. This is a 2-2 two -two game, and this is a real surprise that Brazil, the Cinderella of this tournament here in Japan, Got out to a 1-0 lead, and they did it with Leo Reginato with an RBI hit. Japan tied it in the third with a sacrifice fly from Ayato Sakamoto. But right back to work is Brazil. And after Japan had taken the lead, this RBI single by Reynaldo Sato has tied it at two. And Barry Larkin, whose team stunned Panama in the qualifier to get here, is all tied at two. Into the fifth we go. Uchikawa leads it off. And a high fastball from Murillo Govea. That was a swing to the first base umpire, Poon Ki Kim. 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball from Govea stays upstairs. And we have seen both of these Brazilian pitchers really have a tough time getting the ball down. They haven't really done a very good job of Throwing good quality pitches down in the zone. There's another pitch about belt high that's ripped off the mask of a catcher. Pool A here in Fukuoka starts quickly. It starts tonight here with Brazil and Japan, and Brazil has a quick turnaround. They will face the powerhouse, the number one ranked team in the world, Cuba, tomorrow, 12:30 local time. Breaking ball inside corner and strike three call. There's a look at the upcoming schedule. Cuba and Brazil, 10:30 Eastern, and then you've got Netherlands. They were the darlings of last year's tournament, and in our meetings with Brazil, there was talk of the Netherlands and their run last year to the semifinal, or their run in 09 to the semifinals in Miami because certainly Brazil would like to get themselves to Tokyo. Well, and they had 
so much momentum coming out of their qualifying pool. And we keep saying qualifying pool, then this is the first time that the tournament had been expanded to include four regional qualifiers. 16 extra teams were invited into the tournament. And winners of each of those respective qualifying tournaments advanced into the regular WBC for 2013. A lot of pressure on Team Japan. And for Brazil, they walked into batting practice tonight loose and looking like a team that had played already 80 games in a season. There were there were, did not seem to be any nerves on this Brazilian team at all. And I think a lot of credit goes to Barry Larkin for that. No question about it. Larkin was standing right behind the cage and encouraging all of the fun and enthusiasm, and he was calling out different situations. Get him over, take five swings, get him in. Nice play by Govell. On the comebacker and a little flip. And just like that, the right-hander has a couple of outs. Govell struggled in his first inning of work back in the fourth when he allowed Japan to tie it up, but this inning's been a different story. Got the strikeout now, an easy one-three put out for Govea. And now he's got Atsunori Inaba. Govea is at 34 pitches. Rafael Fernandez, who started, he threw 56. There's a much better fastball right down stairs low at 87, a good movement. In the air, lots of room, and Reginato is there, and he makes the catch. And a 1 2 3 inning for Murillo Govea. Brazil hanging in there with a two time defending champ, Japan. You got them all covered there. You got a Japan jersey, the hometown SoftBank Hawks, and a little Brazilian action there as well and the third pitcher already for team japan tadashi setsu and he is pitching in his home ballpark setsu went 17 and five a year ago with a very good 191 era another starter and that's what we talked about the depth of the japanese pitching staff is remarkable brazil with two runs and six hits already against japan's vaunted pitching staff and another lefty in the bullpen. Good sharp breaking ball for a strike. It's 0 and 2. Really makes it challenging for this Brazilian lineup to have to look at a different pitcher each at bat. When you come up, a different look, a different set of pitches. Setsu has a very good off speed pitch, and it's quite a departure from what they've seen earlier. It looked like a splitter that. Okuda was able to foul off. Now we've had managers express to us a little bit of concern about their pitching staffs in the sense that they have a lot of starters but not middle relievers or closers. It's it's kind of like a, an all star team where you've got a, a bunch of guys that are used to routine and starting and not used to coming in in situations. I don't think it's that much of a problem at this time of the season for the Japanese players just like major league players they're in spring training so starters are only going to go a couple of innings anyway and that's how they settled upon the pitch counts and the restrictions that they've set up for this tournament. Well you tell that to Victor Mesa the, the Cuban manager <laughs> because that was uh, that was near the top of his list of concerns. Well they're finishing up their season they play all winter long so his pitchers are in game shape to begin with. 2 2 pitch coming to Okuda and a good live fastball threw it by him at the letters. Good fastball a little late movement away from Okuda picks up the strikeout. That's only the second strikeout for Japan tonight. And it is night here in Japan, a, a seven o'clock local start. 
wherever you're watching. Two games from this site tomorrow. China making their debut tomorrow night against the host team Japan and Cuba making their debut against this Brazilian team. Gorgeous bunt third base side Orlando got it and keeps it fair. Well, Pablo Orlando is an impressive player. He's a big guy about 6 3 plays center field. He can swing the bat picked up a base hit in his first at bat and here he drops down a bunt and it's a beauty. A very timely bunt. He caught the third baseman Matsuda back and all Matsuda can do is let it roll and unfortunately for Japan it didn't go foul. Gary Larkin told us he does not have a lot of speed no, but his leadoff man baseman. Orlando is the one Booty. guy he feels Booty. comfortable running with. Orlando last year stole 21 bases in double A Arkansas. And that in 116 games so he can steal a bag. And he's at first. Boy that is a quick move from Setsu. Not much of a step toward first he just kind of spun on that. Heel of his. Left foot and made a quick throw to first. And a quick delivery to the plate for a strike. It's 0 and 1. Yeah, here's another challenge of a tournament of this nature is that you don't know much about the pitcher's move either. Trying to get a lead over at first base, and not only are you dealing with a different pitcher every couple of innings, but you're dealing with a pitching staff you've not seen before. You're almost just going to have to pick a pitch and guess with the pitcher and hope it's a breaking ball. Setsu's got a quick move. You can see there's not much of a step. Bob Davison in the United States would be calling that a balk every time he goes to first. <laughs> Breaking ball swung on and missed. And it's 0 2. Now here's the pitch you'd like to run on that splitter that moves down and away and in the dirt. Tough pitch for a catcher to handle and make a good throw. Well you're right in watching that replay by rule the foot's got to come off the rubber before he makes that move. Japan wanted to appeal Chris Guccione the home plate umpire did not see it that way no appeal and the counts one and two. Guccione started his world baseball classic career back in 2006. And he is a veteran of this tournament. Pablo Orlando with speed at first. And Burin, little second baseman for Brazil, hanging tough. Not only does Setsu have a good move to first, he unloads in a hurry. He's a tough guy to run on. You can see he doesn't have much of a leg kick and gets that ball to the catcher. Very quickly, so it makes it difficult for Orlando at first to get a good lead and take a shot at a stolen base. Setsu ready, one two coming. Go ahead, just missed. This time they. Go with the fastball. You can see it ran to the outside corner. Boy, catcher was moving an awful lot. It really made it difficult for Guccione to get a good look at it. Remember, Shinosuke Abe is not in there for Japan tonight. His knee still sore. MVP catcher. Looks like Orlando's ready to run. He was late diving back into first. It's a 2 2 count. That's a good opportunity to take a gamble. There's Abe on the bench, and you can bet he would just as soon be back behind the plate, but he is hampered by that knee injury. 2 2, not running. Delayed steal, and the throw down to second, he's in there. Boy, it was a perfect delayed steal. And generally, in that 
delayed steal mode. He'll bounce off. Watch it. One, two, and then break. And you catch the catcher. Look at the catcher. He was flat footed. That's a great shot to show you the timing. And Orlando executed it perfectly. Infielders will take one last look at the runner at first and when the pitcher is delivering they see he's not breaking so they will generally relax well it was the catcher that relaxed on that delayed steal now a 3 2 coming to Burin and he strikes him out the so set to strikes out Burin and now the guy that has looked the best at the plate for Brazil comes up with a chance to give Brazil the lead it's just a good fastball right here and Burin gets a piece of it but Aikawa holds on for the strikeout. Well, there's a little strategy going on right now, and I think you made a great point as Leonardo Reginato has got two hits in each of his at bats in this ball game. Drove in a run in the first, doubled and scored in the fourth. And Koji Yamamoto sent the pitch coach out there and say, "Hey, we got a base open. Let's don't give in to this guy. He's truly the best hitter on this Brazilian team." So. Let's don't make any foolish mistakes. In a situation like this, if you're going to pitch around the guy, especially your third hitter, for me, I would just assume walk. Don't give the pitcher the opportunity to make a mistake. If you want to walk him, walk him. The Reginato, the RBI single in the first, the leadoff double, and he scored in the fourth, so he's been in the middle of both Brazilian rallies. He had great speed with Orlando at second. A slow breaking ball for a strike. Really interesting. Uh, it appears as though they're going to pitch to him and try to get him out. I think even Reginato was a little bit surprised they threw him a first pitch strike. A one fastball. And again, you talk about movement by a catcher. And we saw Aikawa standing up, thinking fastball, and then lunging towards the corner. That makes it awful tough on Chris Guccione. Well, and the catchers are really not that familiar with the pitchers that they're working with, and he's not really sure about the movement. 1-1 one, one pitch hammered to left. That's deep. Uchikawa, it's over his head, and it's off the wall. And Reginato has done it again. Brazil takes the lead. Three to two. Three for three for Leonardo Reginato and Koji Yamamoto. Doesn't look like a happy skipper. They sent the pitching coach out to talk about Reginato. They had a base open, two outs, the go ahead run in scoring position, and they hung a breaking ball, and he didn't miss it. He drills it to the gap in left center. Orlando scores for the second time tonight and how about that Brazil is back on top. It was stunning to see Brazil. Take the lead to start the game. Surprising to see them come back and tie it after Japan took a 2 1 lead and now here they are on top 3 to 2. And Matsumoto the first baseman. Up for Brazil. And they have out hit Japan eight to three. Yeah, they've left some runners out there. Reginato is in scoring position. He's got good wheels. I tell you what, if Barry Larkin did have any thoughts in the back of his mind that his young Brazilian team was going to be intimidated, all of those thoughts are gone now. They jumped out to a lead, they gave up the lead, and they have retaken it. Well, you could you could see just how fearless Larkin and the Brazilians were in Panama because that was not an easy atmosphere to play. You're at Rod Carew Stadium and you've got a, a lineup with major leaguers major league all stars Carlos Ruiz Carlos Lee. Oh two coming inside out and a little liner to third Matsuda makes the catch 
But Leo Reginato of Brazil has done it again. An RBI double, and Brazil is back on top. Big crowd here in Fukuoka, and although they've been loud all night, they're stunned right now because Brazil, big time underdogs, have a 3 2 lead, and that man, the third baseman for Brazil, Leo Reginato has been in the middle of everything. Well, he sure has, and he got off to a great start. He drove in the first run of the ball game with a solid single to the left back in the first inning. And then in the fourth inning, he led things off with a ringing double to base the wall in left field. He would come around to score. And then in the fifth, with a runner in scoring position, he gets a hanging breaking ball from Setsu and drills it over the head of the left fielder all the way to the wall. Pablo Orlando comes in to score, and Brazil has taken a 3 2 lead. Reginato has three of the eight Brazil hits tonight. Now, what's at stake here? This is the first game of Pool A, but from the outset, both you and I agreed this is the most important game of the entire pool because if Brazil were somehow able to knock off Japan, they would have, of course, tomorrow the powerhouse in Cuba, but later, China and, yeah, and so their path to Tokyo cool. if they get He's this one all of a sudden oh, opens oh. wide yeah and China is really overmatched in this pool and they have been throughout the history of the World Baseball Classic they just don't have the depth of talent that the other teams have Cuba is loaded there's no question about that but Brazil has saved their best pitcher Andre Rienzo for tomorrow's game he's a left handed pitcher that pitches very well and he was in camp with Chicago White Sox during spring training. He got as high as Triple A last year, so he has got a big arm, and they certainly like the possibility of him shutting down the potent Cuban team. Murillo Govea, who had the great relief run in the qualifier in Panama, gave up a run in the fourth. He worked a one-two-three fifth, and he's facing Hisayoshi Chono. Govea's, behind two and one. Govea has retired five straight, and after looking a little bit shaky in his first inning, he's settled in nicely. Three and one. But don't discount the Japanese. They're loaded. They got a lot of pros, and they are determined. They can manufacture runs, and there's another mistake. Govea walks the leadoff man here in the sixth. It is a team of all stars, this Japanese team. And as we noted, they do not have Ichiro, who was a key figure in both championship runs in 06 and 09. They don't have Daisuke Matsuzaka, who was the MVP in both of those championships. They don't have Yu Darvish, who pitched so well in 09. But they have the next generation of stars. They have all stars from top to bottom. Young players who certainly could explode into the uh, major leagues in the next couple of years. Again, Japan playing for that one run after getting the leadoff man on here in the six, trying to tie it up. They will bunt in the first, they'll bunt in the middle of the game, and they'll bunt late. Takashi Toritani, the second baseman. With Chono, the runner at first, and he has a healthy lead. Govea to the plate. Ground ball up the middle. Harim gets an out. Gets them both. A double play. How about that? Harim went after the runner and then had enough time to get the ball to first and get the double play. Boy, great judgment by the second baseman. He knew that he had a better chance of running down the base runner. This ball is not that sharply hit, so he takes it and moves quickly to tag out the runner and then go to first just in time to complete the double play, getting Tori Tani. They showed Bunn on the first pitch, took the Bunn off, and it cost them a double play. Well, you think about two decisions made by Team Japan here in the last inning. Liner to center field. Orlando is there, and he makes the catch. They pitched to Reginato. He doubled home a run. They pulled off the bunt. It turned into a double play. And right now, Brazil has a 3 2 lead.
in this big house, a small contingent of Brazilian fans. And they are going wild right now. Brazil has a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the sixth. Brazil is the home team in this opener, though it's in Fukuoka against the two-time defending World Baseball Classic champs, Japan. Ronaldo Sato, RBI single in the fourth. And he takes outside. Tadashi Setsu continues on. He's the third pitcher to work for Japan. Makun Tanaka, the star, the starter, lasted just two innings, and he did not look good. And a fastball misses up. Again, the bullpens are not within sight of us or anybody sitting here. They are hidden below. Yamaguchi, another lefty, is getting ready. And Yamaguchi is an exceptional pitcher in that he is a reliever on this team. It's a high fastball. It's kind of swung right through. As you oh. pointed out, a lot of hits for Brazil. Brazil has eight hits in this ball game, and Japan has just three. Set to jammed him, a little pop up out behind the mound. Matsuda is there, and he makes the catch. Well, game two of Pool A comes quickly. The world's top ranked team is Cuba. And this Brazil team will turn around 12.30 local start here in the afternoon. Of course, a Saturday night Eastern time at 10.30, 3.30 a.m. GMT. Check your local listings for the exact time in your region. The World Baseball Classic Baseball spoken here. Well, you see one of the great hitters in the world in that game tomorrow in Cuba, the switch hitting Frederick Cepeda who has 22 career hits in World Baseball Classic history and he is two off the all time lead. There's a hanger and that's just foul. Just foul and Magallis who hit a ball out but foul in his last at bat just misses another big hit. Boy that's a hit me breaking ball that curve ball hung right out over the plate and Magallis just missed another extra base hit. The Cuban team, and we heard three of the four managers talk about manufacturing runs. There was no talk of that from the Cuban team. <laughs> they go for big innings. Their batting practice was something. Well, we talked about Cepeda, a switch hitting outfitter for the Cuban team. He has five career home runs, and he leads the World Baseball Classic with 18 career RBIs. Check swing. He went around and a strikeout for Setsu. So Setsu gets Magayis. He's got two outs here in the sixth. Third strikeout for Setsu, and that's another good splitter, boy. That thing dove right as it got into the hitting area, and you can see Magayis tried to check out halfway, went too far. Third strikeout since entering the ball game. This is now his second inning of relief. Juan Carlos Muñiz singled and walked. He got it off the end of the bat. Uchikawa comes charging in and he makes the catch. Quick inning for Setsu. And we sail to the seventh. And look at this. Brazil has a 3 2 lead. A real story here in Fukuoka. First game of Pool A. The two time defending champion of the World Baseball Classic and the home team, Japan, trailing Brazil. Oscar Nakayoshi out of Sao Paulo. The 21 year old lefty comes in, and now Barry Larkin, the Hall of Fame manager for Brazil, will try to match up and get these last nine outs and get what would be a stunning upset to open up this tournament. Nakaoshi started game two in the qualifier in Panama City pitched against Colombia as Brazil beat Colombia seven to one. Nakaoshi went four shutout innings allowed just two runs on five hits walked two and struck out four. So he's got the ability to give Barry Larkin some innings if he's effective here tonight. He gets the number nine one two hitters for Japan. 
Nobuhiro Matsuda, who has flied out and has singled the first one out of the shoot. Takaoshi pitched at the same university as the starter, Rafael Fernandez. Hankuo University here in Japan. Boy, he jams. A lot of suited there. A lot of the Brazilian players, especially those of Japanese heritage, will come over to Japan to play high school baseball, which is immensely popular in this country, and college baseball. The high school baseball tournament in Japan is one of the great sporting events in the world. Swing and a miss. Change up. And Nakaoshi strikes him out. Well, what a good sequence pitches for Nakaoshi. He goes down and away with the changeup. You can see that grip, how he takes a lot of velocity off, had terrific arm action, and really sells it to Matsuda, who chases a pitch down and away. Yeah, that high school baseball tournament in Japan, of course, Daisuke Matsuzaka created his mystique pitching in that tournament. But it's just like a Texas high school football night. Other game going on in Pool B, Netherlands on top of Korea 1-0. The Netherlands, of course, the story in 09, they're a much stronger team this go-round than they were in 09. I think in 09, there weren't a lot of major leaguers. In fact, the, the Roger Bernardinas, uh, the Jair Jurgens did not play in 09. But after that great run and all the publicity and the good feelings, there are more major league and top prospects that are playing for the Netherlands now. Andrew Jones is playing for the Netherlands. Anderson Simmons, a shortstop for the Atlanta Braves. You Simmons. mentioned Bernardina. And Simmons is a terrific player. And he scored that one run. And right now, a 1 0 lead. Here, Brazil's on top 3 2 over Japan. And a swing and a miss. And Oscar Nakaoshi has come out of the bullpen and has struck out two here in the seventh inning. Another change if you can see that grip, how he really chokes that baseball and takes a lot off the pitch. The effectiveness of a changeup is all in the arm action. You see fastball arm action and change up velocity, and it fools hitters time and time again. Well, a pinch hitter now for Japan, and a guy that fans over the United States are familiar with, Kaz Matsui. A guy that played in the major leagues for some time. Matsui with the Mets, the Rockies, and the Astros. Matsui is switch hitter, batting right handed. Matsui tries one down the right field line into the corner, and it's a foul ball. Yeah, this is quite a departure from what has been the case in the past. Matsui is the only former Major League player on this particular roster for Team Japan. And he almost gets himself an extra base hit. You can see it just slices out of play down the right field line. There's not a lot of foul territory down the lines. There's a ton of it in front of the dugouts and behind home plate. One of the tricky things about this field, and we saw it in the two exhibition games, there is no warning track in foul territory in front of the walls down both lines. We've seen a couple of players go charging into the padded walls. 0 oh 2. Nakaoshi, the lefty, has struck out the first two he's faced here in the seventh. And his 0-2 pitch. Matsui drives one on a hot lunging stop. Matsumoto gets the first. And Brazil retires Japan 1-2-3 in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch. And Cinderella is alive and well in Fukuoka. Brazil leads Japan 3-2. Well, there it is. Japan, the favorite certainly here in this pool.
and a favorite to get to the finals in San Francisco. Brazil had to qualify to get here. And in the bottom of the seventh, in the first game of Pool A, Brazil has a one run lead in the bottom of the seventh. The first pitch from Tadashi Setsu is a strike to Diego França, the catcher for Brazil. Well, we got to give Francis some credit for what he's done behind the plate to really neutralize the Japanese offense. A nice job of calming down his pitching staff. And remember, it was Jan Gomes who was in that spot in the qualifier in Panama for those three games in November. The three biggest games in Brazilian baseball history until this one. Here's the 0 2. Jan Gomes caught all three of those games. He went four for 12 in the series. Drove in a couple of runs, including the run in the 1 0 win over Panama to clinch their spot in this tournament. A hard comebacker. Setsu grabs it. Speaking of November, the final game. It came down to this. He's marching to the World Baseball Classic. Thiago Vieira struck out Ruben Rivera to end the ball game, and the Brazilian team celebrated in their clubhouse and doused their skipper Barry Larkin. But they pitched very well. They allowed a total of three runs over the three games, and it was all about pitching and defense. You, you see that that smile by Larkin there. For the, all the time that we've had him on camera tonight that's the first time he's cracked any type of a smile. He has been confident. Stoic. When his ball club has scored he hasn't become too excited when Japan answered. Didn't show any emotion. And make no mistake Barry Larkin is not here to play a close game. He's here to win. A swing and a miss. Pedro Okuda, the number nine hitter for Brazil. In that clinching game, Carlos Ruiz got a base hit with a runner at second. In the bottom of the ninth, the score won nothing. The runner stopped at third. And then Thiago Vieira was able to strand that runner at third and complete the one nothing win. So they had a chance. Panama had a chance to tie it. Ruiz got a base hit to left field, but they stopped the runner at third. And it's hard to say momentum can go from November all the way to March. But that confidence that Brazil got from that win seems to have translated here tonight against the heavily favored Japan team. Setsu gets the first two outs of the seven. Setsu's done a nice job. He now has four strikeouts since coming into the ball game, and this time he uses that breaking pitch and Gets Okuda to chase. But back to the top of the order, and a guy that's done a lot of damage here tonight, Pablo Orlando. Got a couple of hits and scored two runs. Had a big stolen base in the fifth, a delayed steal that set up the go ahead run. Breaking ball misses outside. So Pablo Orlando, an infield hit, a bunt single. He has scored a couple runs. He has stolen a base. Fastball to right. Itoy makes the catch. Setsu looks sharp. But Japan is running out of outs to the eight. Brazil, 3 2. Right now, Brazil is on top by a run, and the man responsible is Leo Reginato, the third baseman for Brazil. An RBI single in the first, a double in the fourth, an RBI double in the fifth. He's been terrific at the plate. Team Japan had a chance to walk it back in the fifth inning. They had a base open running at scoring position in two outs, and they chose to pitch to him, and it proved costly. 
And so here we go into the eighth inning. Brazil sticking with the lefty, Oster Nokashi. And he was outstanding in the seventh inning. A 1 2 3 inning with a pair of strikeouts. He's facing the heart of the order, 3 4 5 in the Japan order. Seichi Uchikawa, Yoshio Itoi, and Atsunori Inaba. One of the reasons that Nakaoshi's in this game is that he's left handed. It's a one run game, and Japan has a big bat on the bench in Abe, but he is a left handed hitter. Abe is available to pinch hit. Koji Yamamoto, the manager of Japan, told us this morning that he would use Abe as a pinch hitter. So he's got him on the bench, but you can bet Barry Larkin is thinking about that one left-handed bat, and if he can stick with a left-handed reliever in this game, he'll do it just to keep Abe on the bench. Breaking ball in the dirt, and it's two and two. There is that bench. It is not a Japanese team that has a lot of power, and Abe probably has the most pop. No sign of Abe. He's probably loosening up and swinging a bat. Uchikawa, who has walked, has been hit by a pitch and has struck out. Into left field. That's a base hit. And Japan has their leadoff man aboard. Japan had a leadoff walk back in the six, but it was erased by a double play. And here, Uchikawa rips one in the left. He's been on base three times tonight. Well, you've made the, the comment that Japan will play little ball no matter where they are in the lineup. Here they are with a runner at first and their cleanup hitter up, Yoshio Itoi. And then you've got Atsunori Inaba. They have bunted in situations like this, and they may do it in this situation, even with the cleanup batter, simply because it's lefty on lefty. They have a pinch hitter on deck, Hirokazu Ibata. He's a right handed hitter and he has come on deck for an hour. And you can see they throw to first base just to see whether or not the batter would square around to tip his hand. And so Ibata is on deck. Koji Yamamoto, the all time, one of the all time greats here in Japan. Another move over and a pretty good move for Nokashi. Boy, there's a lot going on right now. Yamamoto looks like he has put the bun on. Reginato, the third baseman, is really charging in from third, anticipating the bun. He's bunting. He lays it down. And the play to first. Brazil gets the out. Uchikawa is now at second. He toy the cleanup hitter, sacrifices, and puts a runner in scoring position. And you can see Yamamoto calling out to Chris Guccione, the home plate umpire, that he is going to pinch hit with Ibata. Now the question is, will Barry Larkin counter with a right-hander? Thiago Vieira is their closer, and he is a power pitcher that closed out both games against Panama. So now it's a situation where there's no concern about the pitcher Nakaoshi he's a starter so he's got plenty of bullets left in the tank. And there's the first round scoreboard as the Netherlands has the lead over Korea. To Kurt Smith RBI in that one here Japan is trailing but as you can see the tying runs in scoring position. And even though Barry Larkin has a pair of relievers ready, he is sticking with the lefty. Here is Ibata. Well, because Nakaoshi has a great changeup, and that neutralizes the right-handed bat. 
but he's got to get to a count where he can use it. He's been able to throw it any time. And there's Abe. He is ready to bat. Should they make the switch to the right hand? That's why Clark is sticking with Nakaoshi. In the right field, that's a base hit. Uchikawa will score. And once again, it's tied. Yamamoto pitched the right button. He sent the pinch hitter up, and there's that pitch down and away. That Ibata slaps by the second baseman into right field. And that picked up the Japanese bench for sure. 3-3. Three, three. The center fielder, number 34, Hisayoshi Chono. So Ibata with the RBI single. Chono now, the center fielder, who is 0 for 2. Larkin comes out, and he'll talk with Guccione, and we'll see who he goes with. Brazil is going to go with Kelsey Kondo. At least that's the indication from the cavernous bullpen. And we'll take a timeout. Nokeoshi comes out. Japan has tied it. Back and forth they go. Brazil looking for an enormous upset. The heavily favored two time defending champ Japan continues to come back. And here, Hiro Ibata with a pinch hit single to right with one out in the eighth to tie the game. Again, the Japanese get the leadoff man on, which was single, and then they use their cleanup hitter. To sacrifice him to second and cashed it in to tie the game. New pitcher for Brazil is Kelsey Kondo. Kondo, who pitched at the University of Utah, he moved to Southern California as a teenager from Brazil. Ibata chased back. He had a big lead at first base. Chono walked his last time up. Runner goes and then stops on a breaking ball in the hole. Safe at second. Okuda made the throw. Boreen came off the bag and then flat out dropped the ball. Ibata started and then stopped. The runner at first broke for second. The ball is pulled in the hole. It's short. Okuda gets it, but he pulls the second baseman off the bag. It looked like Marin took his eye off the ball before he got it. If he keeps his eye on the ball, catches it, they get the force at least at second, get one out. Yeah, that should have been an out at second base. And it'll be scored as an infield single. Number one. Takashi. And here is Takashi Toritani. And so now you've got Brazil who has lost the lead. And now Barry Lorcan's ball club is trying not to give up another run. Shinosuke Abe is on deck. The power hitting catcher who did not start because of a sore knee. Bat for the catcher. 
Aikawa. Tortoni hit into a double play back in the sixth. Kondo, who has that sidearm slinging delivery, has fallen behind 2 0, and one would expect that were Abe to come to the plate, Kondo would not face him. Difficulties right now. He's fallen behind three and zero. And you've got Abe on deck. Prancer out there trying to calm him down. Prancer, the catcher, has done a nice job tonight, and right now he's got his work cut out for him. A three zero count, just one out. Brazil in danger of loading the bases with a three forty hitter on deck. Abe. Kondo's 3 0. And he misses badly. And so now, here comes Abe. Bags are loaded. And it's not Larkin who is coming to the mound. Instead, it's Thiago Caldera, the pitching coach. We're told that this lefty just got up about a minute ago. And so Larkin may be trying to buy some time here. But now they have announced Abe into the game as a pinch hitter. Yamamoto came out, told the umpire, Chris Guccione, that he was going to be into the game. So Kondo has to pitch to him. Now you can hear the reaction. Last three days, every headline in the Japanese papers centered around the knee of Shinosuke Abe. It's his right knee. And he puts all of his weight on that back leg. He has one of those exaggerated leg kicks. So it shouldn't be an issue with him hitting. Japan has the lead. It's a bullet of a fielder's choice. Well, I tell you what, Koji Yamamoto has done a heck of a job of managing this game. He knew his team well. He wanted the same Abe for a pivotal at bat, and he delivers. A bullet knocked down by Burin, but on the fielder's choice, Japan has taken the lead. In this inning, Yamamoto has had the cleanup batter sacrifice, has tied the game up with a pinch base hit, and then used a second pitch hitter in the inning to take the lead. Terrific job managing his ball club in this inning. Remember, it is top of the eighth. Japan is the visiting team. But a two run eight and a one run lead. Now, Matsuda, who was one for three in the nine spot, goes around at a breaking ball from Kondo. If Abe's knee is so bad that he can't catch, Japan has three catchers on their roster. So they have an option. But they got what they wanted out of Abe. A pivotal at bat, and he delivers the RBI. Liner to center. Japan adds another. Matsuda.
They take what you give them. They don't have a lot of power, but Matsuda stayed back on the breaking ball and delivers the RBI base hit up the middle. And that's going to knock Kondo out of the game. Breaking ball out over the plate, not trying to do too much with it, doesn't try to pull it, and drives it into center for an RBI single. Great job by Yamamoto this inning. You get your number three hitter to start it out, Uchikawa, and then the cleanup batter sacrifices, starts a big inning. And a 5-3 lead for Japan. Shinosuke Abe has delivered a pinch hit RBI. Japan has three runs here. This was the Abe shot with the bags loaded. It was knocked down behind the bag at second. It drove in a run. And then Nobuhiro Matsuda followed with an RBI single. That knocks Kelsey Kondo out of the ball game. Ernesto Norris, a right-hander, is in for Brazil. Brazil came into the inning on top 3-2. And seemingly in control was uh, Oscar Nokooshi. Nokooshi, remember, had the 1 2 3 7. But in the eighth, he ran into trouble right away. Uchikawa single, sacrificed by Itoi. And remember, Ibata had the RBI single as well. Yeah. Nakaoshi looked like he was going to be able to pitch a couple of innings, but that big leadoff single by Uchikawa set the tone for the inning so far. This is this is such a great atmosphere here in Japan. Big swing and a foul ball. They, the band has been at it out in right field. The fans have been up and down throughout. Well, they were worried for a while. There wasn't much for the old hometown team to cheer about. But three runs here in the inning so far. And they've taken a two run lead. That man right there, the MVP of the Central League in 2012, he had 340 during the regular season, delivers a big RBI. He yeah. didn't get credited with a hit, but boy, it's a big RBI. Catcher for the Giants, MVP, championship. And he's he's not named Buster Posey. And he's running on that one two pitch, and it's popped foul and out of play. Yeah, for a guy that's got a bad knee, he didn't hesitate at second. The pitcher never looked him back. He just kind of waltzed off second base and headed toward third, but the ball was fouled out of play. That's a pretty good sign that he is moving. If Japan wins this ball game, they've got China tomorrow night. It's another opportunity for Yamamoto to rest him. Because as you noted, China is certainly a a much bigger underdog than Brazil was coming into this ball game. Brazil a, a huge underdog, but here they were up three to two going into this, the top of the eighth. One two. <laughs> Norris <laughs> channeling his inner Marmol there. I think he had the strikeout. Well, Norris pitched 11 years in Cuba. And you can see the animation that you see in Cuban players. He pitched in the Industrial League for 11 years. He moved to Brazil in 2001 and has since has played there in Brazil. 2 2. Magaís makes the catch. The Brazilians have their work cut out. Down by two now in the bottom of the eighth. That's where we're headed. Pool A of the World Baseball Classic starting tonight here in Fukuoka and Pool A rather Pool B 
first round action. The Netherlands continues to lead that ball game in the bottom of the fifth. If you're just uh, tuning into this one, it's been a, uh, a wild ride. Brazil, huge underdogs, had to qualify to even get into the tournament. Did so in dramatic fashion, facing the uh, two time champs. Took a 1 0 lead right out of the shoot, fell behind 2 1, tied it, got the lead, but in the top of the eighth, Japan, led by Shinosuke Abe and his big RBI, with three runs in that eighth and a 5 3 lead. And Abe stays in. Now batting. The He's behind the plate. Pick, number four. So the knee Lily is good Lee. enough to hit, Rudy. and apparently the knee is good enough to catch. Atsushi Nomi is the new pitcher, 33 years old. And boy, what a job by Tadashi Setsu. He really came in and shut down the Brazilian team to give his chance, his team a chance to take the lead. And the first pitch a strike. Felipe Burin, Leo Reginato, and Daniel Matsumoto. 2 3 4 for the Brazilians and a breaking ball that misses outside. And of course, Reginato has been the man for Brazil with an RBI single and then a pair of doubles. One that drove in a run in the fifth. <laughs> that high setup. And the one two. Pretty good fastball 90 miles an hour missed upstairs. Nomi is another starter. He led the Central League in strikeouts and he was tied at 172 strikeouts with Suguchi Suguchi who pitched earlier in this game. Shia Suguchi came in relief in the third worked a couple of innings so another starter pitching as a reliever for Japan. Three two coming to Boreen. Bouncer out to second. Toritani gets the out. Japan is so deep in their pitching staff and they've got two more ready to go. Yamaguchi the lefty. Kazuhisa Makita the right hander. And there, of course, the skipper, Koji Yamamoto, one of the great players in Japanese baseball history. We saw Sadahura O oh throw out the first pitch. Yamamoto doesn't have, what is it, 868 home runs that O oh had, but uh, well over 500. Reginato takes the first pitch strike. What a night he's had. A couple of doubles, three hits in the game. He's driven in two runs, scored a run. Pops him up, and for the first time tonight, Japan gets Reginato out. Well, you can see the difference in the presence behind the plate that Abe brings, even on that last pitch. He gave a sign and really was animated in how he wanted it. You can see the leadership skills he has. He's moving the outfielders around too. I mean, this guy's 32 years old and he has been a star player over here for a number of years. Two time gold glover back behind the plate. Now, Team Japan feels whole with their catcher. Abe had a great postseason last year. Yomoyuri won the title. Won the Japan series. And he really hit well down the stretch. In the final month of the season, he raised his average 40 points. Gives you an idea. He hit over 400 in the final month of the season to finish up with 340. Ninety-one on that fastball. And they count one ball, one strike, two outs, bottom eight. Japan has come back to take the lead over Brazil. It's a letter high strike. Brazilian fans. A celebratory mood 
all night long until the eight. The top of. And here in the bottom of the eight. Atsushi Nomi works quickly. A one, two, three, eight to the ninth. Japan by two. Ninth inning has arrived in Fukuoka. Brazil had the lead. In fact, Brazil was six outs away from an enormous upset until Japan struck for three runs in the top of the eighth. And so here, top of the ninth, Japan trying to add on. Ernesto Norris trying to get it to the bottom of the ninth and keep it at two. As Matsui pulls that one foul. Matsui came in as a pinch hitter, the former big leaguer, back in the seventh inning. Norris is the fifth to work for Brazil. Big breaking ball, and it stays at 0 2. Matsui batting left hand, he's a switch hitter, he hit right hand for the first time. He hit back in the seventh inning, grounded back with the pitcher. Matsui had an interesting career in the big leagues. He set a record, he's the only big leaguer in Major League history to homer on three consecutive opening days. For a guy that didn't hit a lot of homers, yeah. that's pretty impressive. And those homers came in his first at bat. Each year. Of each year. That's pretty impressive. It was downhill after that. The, <laughs> the, the <laughs> that's a tough standard to set for yourself. The only major leaguer to ever homer in his first at bat. Each year for three years in a row. Well, they got some scouting reports in there, although certainly not as detailed. Chopper out towards short, and Matsui is thrown out by Okuda. Well, game two of Pool A, this Brazil team will have to turn it around quickly because they take on powerhouse Cuba. And that's at 10:30 Eastern Time, 3:30 GMT, and that's here in Fukuoka. Check your local listings for the exact time in your region. World Baseball Classic, baseball spoken here. Now Cuba is loaded with offensive players: Ulieski Guriel, the third baseman; Frederick Cepeda, the outfielder, switch hitter with power. Seiichi Uchikawa. Well, he started the rally back in the seventh at a sharp single in the left, came around to score the third run of the ball game. That tied it up. Japan in that eighth inning got three runs on four hits. They had just three hits the entire game going into that inning. And though they were making plenty of noise, the 28,000 that are in here were very, very nervous. Nothing short of a third World Baseball Classic Championship will do if you're Team Japan. Well, when you think about it, with the Koreans playing in Tai Chung. The Cubans playing here in this pool. One of those three teams is not going to advance to the semifinals. And they're three of the best teams in the world. Up the middle, Pedro Acuda to his left has it. And the Brazilian shortstop throws out a couple. In game box score for Japan, Koji Yamamoto's ball club. Not a lot of damage, but as we noted, those four hits and the three runs all coming in the eighth 
And certainly Yamamoto had his fingerprints all over that inning. Boy, he sure did. He did a heck of a job after the Uchikawa leadoff single. He toy the cleanup batter, dropped down a sacrifice bunt, and that got the inning going. That really set up the situation. Then he used two key pinch hitters, and they both delivered RBIs. Ibarra hit for Inaba, and then Abe hit for the catcher, and they both had pinch RBIs in that situation. I tell you what, he toys a great example of how the Japanese players always play team baseball. And with nobody out in the man at first, the cleanup hitter drops down a perfect sacrifice bunt. Terrific diving catch by Matsumoto, and that ends Japan's ninth. For Brazil, one more shot. Down by two. To the bottom of the ninth we go. Japan's closer is in. Kazuhisa Nakita. And he rifles in a fastball and he's out in front 0 oh 2. As the bottom of the ninth has arrived. Nakita has been an impressive. Run here. For this Japanese bullpen. And he misses outside with a breaking ball. Makita's had an interesting career. He started out with the Cebu Lions as a starter, then went to closing, and then last year moved back to the rotation. He started again last year. They went 13 and 9 with a 243 ERA. So here with Team Japan, he's closing, and he's got a funky delivery. A submarine delivery where those knuckles almost scrape the mound as he delivers, and all of a sudden the Brazilian hitters have to pick up a totally different release point. Tiago Magaiz. Magaiz had a base hit back in the second. Brazil jumped to a 1 0 lead. Japan tied it, then took a 2 1 lead. Magaiz has a Another hit. Well, he swung the bat well tonight. Around first. And Brazil will bring the tying run to the plate. Brazil has out hit Japan 9 to 7. Magayis has his second hit of the night. There's no give up in this lineup for sure. It looked like a floating breaking ball that Magayis stayed back on and loops it over the third baseman's head. He just missed a home run foul earlier in the game and just missed a double down the left field line. But he is two for four tonight. Pretty impressive approach. Juan Carlos Muniz. He's one for two. Elevates the fastball. Now the Brazilian team doesn't have much power and they don't have a bat on the bench they could send to the plate and hope he could run into one. So Barry Larkin knows he's got to string together some base hits here. A very concerned dugout. They had a lot of emotion early on. They scored in the first and then came back and took the lead in the middle of the ball game. 0 2 pitch to Muniz. Just overpowering right now. Of course, Major League fans remember a, a Korean right hander with a similar delivery, Byung Young Kim in the big leagues, who had a, a run as a closer. Pinch hitter for Brazil. And for Brazil, it's a big man. It's Iago Januario. And Barry Larkin is hoping that this big guy runs into one. Well, he's 6'6. He's an interesting player in that he started out professionally as a pitcher. And now he's become a hitter. 
He certainly has the size to make you think he can knock it out of the ballpark. But he's only been hitting for a year and a half. Still a work in progress. And as Larkin told us about Januario, to learn how to hit in this environment at this level, not easy. One two pitch with two outs. And he gets a piece of it and stays alive. Japan down for much of the game. A three run eighth, and now a two run lead. A strike away from opening with a win. To center. Chono is there and he makes the catch and Japan comes from behind and beats Brazil five to three. Well, and they did it just exactly like we predicted pitching and defense and even though they're starting Tanaka didn't have a great game he allowed just four hits in a single run it was unearned but they got their star into the game. Shinosuke Abe came on as a pinch hitter in the eighth two pinch hits in the eighth led to a couple of runs and Koji Yamamoto the manager did a heck of a job in that eighth inning as he scratched out three runs and that was the difference in the ball game. So Japan survives Brazil five three the final and Abe with a big RBI and a big comeback for Team Samurai here the favorites to get to Tokyo and then on to San Francisco a scare tonight but they win it. Five to three. Back at it tonight at 10:30. Cuba and Brazil. Check your local listings for the time in your area. For Buck Martinez, I'm Rich Waltz. So long from Fukuoka. This has been a special presentation of the World Baseball Classic. <laughs>